I had a pretty decent week of sales in this last week of July, despite the fact that I was in Seattle, and it all comes down to this beautiful woman right here. I was able to continue selling on all of my reselling platforms because she came to my house and shipped for me while I was on vacation in Seattle. So if you wanna see what sold for me in the last week of July, stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on reselling platforms like Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, a few others. We're gonna be talking about what sold for me in the last week of July, thanks to my friend Chiwan. I do make a what sold video like this every single week, just sharing with you all of the items that sell for me on you know those various reselling platforms so that you have an idea of what's selling for someone else and perhaps you'll learn about a brand or a style or just something that you should pick up because of some of the things that I share with you in this video. So if you enjoy what sold videos and other reselling videos like like uh, tips and tricks videos or thrift hauls, things of that nature, definitely make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And if you're excited to see what sold for me, hit that like button. So we're gonna be talking about the weeks of July 26th through August 8th. Oh, uh, these were not good weeks for me. And I think part of the reason is because even though I learned from my first trip to the Smoky Mountains that I needed to do a lot of prep work, you know, before going on vacation. And I did that before we went to New York and actually, you know, had decent sales during and after the trip. It's like I forgot everything and I just didn't have the time or ability to uh, work ahead and have listings scheduled out for while we were on our trip in Seattle. So I actually did do a pretty good job in that first week of our vacation of listing every day, um, even if it was like one item a day. But then the second week I was like, forget it. I was just too tired. There was just like so much going on and I was on vacation. I didn't want to list or anything. We're going to start with July 26th, which was a Monday. This was like the day after I left for my trip. And I did keep all of my reselling platforms open because I did have a wonderful friend who I talked about in last week's video, my friend Chi Wan, who came to my house. She lives like three minutes away. So she came to my house like every other day and shipped for me. So all I did was change my shipping and handling time to two days and she was able to take care of all of my shipping. It was amazing and because of her i was able to make even the you know little bit that i did so starting with monday which was july 26th i had this matilda jane sale it was this striped floral sleeveless dress in a size small it sold for 35 dollars. i picked it up for about eight dollars at a local consignment store matilda jane can do pretty well for me just kind of depending and so i made a profit of 20 dollars on that dress i'm pretty happy with a 20 dollar profit that's like my bare minimum goal as far as when i go out to thrift things I'll list whatever if I get it for free, but if I'm going out to actually pay for something, my hope and goal is to make at least $20 on the item. And I just barely did after Poshmark's fees and my cost of goods. On eBay, I sold this pair of Nike ACG purple slip-on sneakers in a size two that was for like babies or infants. These I did not make a good profit on. So I think I had about $10 into those at a local children's consignment store. I don't know why on earth earth i thought i needed to pay that much for these typically nike acg can do pretty well but you know infants who are wearing shoes this size can't even walk so what on earth do they need nice shoes for so these finally sold after being listed for i want to say at least half a year for 17 dollars um they did pay for shipping like i said i had about 10 dollars into them my profit on those shoes was five dollars and 57 cents Honestly, with Nikes, I've made a vow to myself after making so many mistakes to always look up the style number. It's on the inside of the tongue of all Nike shoes to look up the style number and look up comps because there are so many different Nike shoes out there, most of which really just are not worth that much. I have run into some that are great money. And the only reason you know I knew that was because I looked at the style number and looked up comps. So from here on out, I'm only going to pick up Nikes if the comps show that they're worth you know picking up these were not so the next sale that I had was a direct sale that I made someone on Facebook marketplace saw that I had this new with tags Zaya half zip salmon pullover and I had it listed on Facebook marketplace for like I want to say 
50 or $60. She asked if I'd be willing to do like 35 or 40 or something like that. But we did finally meet in the middle at 45. I believe she was getting it as a gift for her sister. And so after I paid for shipping, which was $4 and nine cents. And after my cost of goods, which was $8 and 20 cents, I picked it up from a local pop-up consignment sale not too long ago. I made a profit on that item of $32 and 71 cents. I love picking up Zaya. Their leggings especially do extremely well. It is one of those brands that for the most part people sell at like their own um, like Facebook parties or house parties. It is like a direct sales type of product, um, but it does have a pretty good following. Um, this was my first time, I think, trying to sell one of their pullovers, like anything that wasn't really leggings, and it still did pretty well. It got a lot of attention. I got a lot of lowball offers on it. I probably did have overpriced, like on every other platform but Facebook Marketplace, I had it priced to like 75, and someone actually messaged me and was like, you're charging way too much for this, and I was like, I don't care. But I did finally sell it at 45, made a decent profit on it, and I'm always on the lookout for Zaya. Zia? Zaya? I don't know. The next thing to sell was a true Facebook Marketplace sale, and it was this Rawlings right hand infielder's baseball glove, and it was in a size 11.25 inches. I don't know anything about baseball. I find it extremely boring. I'm so sorry if that's insulting to you. There's just too much not happening. I feel like in sports like basketball and volleyball, like there's action happening all the time, points being scored all the time. But in baseball, like you could literally end a game 0-0 zero, zero, and there's a lot of standing around. So I don't get it. And I don't know where this came from. This is another instance of it just showed up in my house. I asked my brother if it was his because he plays baseball and he was like, no, but it turned out to be a pretty good glove. I was doing a little bit of research on it. I couldn't really figure out if it was like right-handed or left-handed. So I just, you know, did as much research as I could. I still got some of the information wrong. And someone on Facebook Marketplace, after sending me a pretty lowball offer, was like, you know, you actually have some of the information wrong. So he told me what I needed to change. I think it was like, maybe the position. I don't think initially I had infielders in the listing. I think it was something else. And he was like, this is an infielders glove. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and so after going back and forth over a period of a number of days with this buyer, we finally settled on 40. I think I had it listed at like 50 or 60, um, but we settled on 40. And so I made a pure profit of $37 and 55 cents because it just appeared in my house. Like this is what happens when you tell people that you're a reseller. You just find things in your house that you don't even know how it necessarily got there, but some of that stuff is worth good money. So I guess some baseball gloves, baseball mitts are worth a good amount of money. Keep your eyes out for them. On Tuesday, which was July 27th, this is kind of funny because I sold this Slazinger, I don't know how to say this brand name, Slazinger Black Golf. So that was written on the inside of the skirt. It said Slazinger Golf. But then I wrote the listing as well. I wrote tennis squirt because it looked a lot like what I think people wear when they play tennis as well. I don't know, it was all over the place, but um, it was in a size youth extra large. This was something that someone from my church gave to me for free. I got a bunch of stuff by this brand from this person, Slazinger. So I think they tried golf, didn't really like golf, and then gave me all of their golf stuff. This I had listed for 25, it sold for my full asking price on Poshmark. And so I made a $20 profit on that skirt. The next item to sell, I believe, was another full price sale, and it was this um, American Eagle Linen Blend Graphic T-shirt in a size small. This was part of my 4 for $25 sale, and I did only have it listed for $12 because there were some pit stains on it, and it wasn't something that I felt like I needed to, you know, try and get the pit stains out of because it just wasn't going to be worth that much, even if I could. So I just listed it for 12. Somebody bought it at my full asking price and I made a profit of $9 and five cents on that shirt. I got it for free from someone at church. So there you go. And then on eBay, I had a pretty nice sale. It was this e Shakti purple dress with like flowers and butterflies all over it. It was really pretty and it was sleeveless in a size three X. I do enjoy picking up e Shakti. It doesn't necessarily sell fast, but it usually does sell for a pretty decent amount. So this dress sold for my full asking price of $39.99. They paid for shipping. I had about $4 into it from a local consignment store, and I made $29.78 on that dress. It was listed for a few months, but I was still really happy with the profit. And then on Wednesday, which was July 28th, on Poshmark, I had a pretty great sale. It was this pair of new without the box Merrill gray Lux wrap clogs in the color drizzle in a size 7. 
seven. They sold for $50. I believe I had them listed for 60, but I sent out offers to likers on these clogs for $50 with discounted shipping. I got them for $5 at a local garage sale that I went to over the summer. And so I made a profit on those shoes of $32.54. Merrill is so like hit or miss for me. Sometimes I can sell it for so much and sometimes I just cannot move it. So, you know, you have to pick up the right styles. These, you know, I definitely benefited from the fact that they were new without the box. I actually had the box, but um, I didn't want to have to ship them out in the box. So I just said new without the box. And um, they just happened to be a style that, you know, was reselling for a fair amount. So you want to make sure that you do your research when it comes to Merrill. Just because it's Merrill doesn't mean that it's, you know, going to be a good pickup. And then on eBay, I had a few sales. The first item was Oh my gosh, I was so happy to see these go. It was this pair of Forever 21 black mid-rise jean shorts in a size 25. Not only were they Forever 21, but like I think that the zipper had broke and so someone took what looked like a little keychain ring and they just like strung it through the little loop on the zipper of the shorts. It was so ridiculous. Um, and I did take pictures of the little ring and I, you know, definitely described it, but I don't think I described that it was like a little keychain ring. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a return on this. Like this person's gonna get these shorts and be like, why did she think it was okay to sell? All these um my friend chi one who was doing my packages she was like do you know that there's just like a random ring on the zipper as the zipper pull and i was like i just send it let's just see what happens i think i actually got positive feedback on these shorts they sold for seven dollars with free shipping I remember distinctly picking these up at a Goodwill like three years ago. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm going to assume I had about $3 into these. So I'm going to say that I lost 60 cents on that sale. Okay. <laughs> like, but I gained a very valuable lesson, which is don't pick up Forever 21 at the thrift store. Like there's just no reason for it. And secondly, don't pick up Forever 21 if they're trying to pass off a keychain ring as a zipper pull. Lots of things wrong with that item, but it moved and hopefully helped me out in the eBay algorithm. That's what I'll say happened because I did have two other sales this day. So the next thing to sell was this Chico's Traveler's black sleeveless full zip hoodie in a size medium. This sold for $24.90. That was the offer that I sent out to watchers and it was promoted at 1% as well. I do promote basically everything at 1%. Um, that had free shipping on it as well. I had less than a dollar into it because I picked it up from a local bulk sale that I did at a local consignment store. And so I had a profit in that item of about $14.63. Not too shabby. Chico's Travelers can do pretty well. I've definitely slowed down on picking it up because there just isn't as much of a demand for it as there was in the past. Um, but if it's kind of special, I'll pick it up. This, not special, but I got it last year. The next thing to sell was a full price sale on eBay, and it was this Aviva, which is like the girl's uh, Lululemon line. It was the Court Champ Coral Activewear Dress in a size 10. I got this for free from a friend at church as well, the same friend that gave me all the Slazenger golf stuff. Um, it sold for $34.99, and it was promoted at 1%. So after they paid for shipping and after fees and promoted fees and all that good stuff, I made a profit of $29.84. I have not found that much Aviva. I have found like a tank before, and it sold for like, I mean, it was okay. But the dresses can do pretty well. And then on Mercari, I sold this pair of Sam Edelman Felicia Ballet Flats for $25. I believe that was just the price that it had dropped to using smart pricing on Mercari. I had $4.86 into those because I bought them at a local consignment store when they were having a sale. And so my profit on those was $16.61. I kind of assumed I wouldn't make as much on these, but I had hoped that they would be, you know, a faster flip. And they they were, like they, they sold pretty quickly. I think they are a perfect shoe for the workplace even for like school, you know, so I was pretty confident that they would sell quickly for at least, you know, a $15 profit, which they did. And then I had another direct sale. So my friend Jiwon, actually, she and I and my sister-in-law, we did a garage sale together not too long ago. And she tried selling these um, Recollections. That was the brand. I believe you can pick up Recollections at places like Barnes and Noble, maybe even Target. Actually, I'm pretty sure you can at Target too. She had these three Recollections guided journals. So if you've ever 
seen like bullet journals. They were basically like bullet journals, but they give you kind of prompts and they have some, you know, things written in there already. So you don't have to fill it all out yourself. Um, so she had three of them and I had them listed out separately, but then someone messaged me and asked me if I would bundle them all together for her. Um, this was through Facebook Marketplace, but we just ended up taking the transaction off of Facebook Marketplace since we were turning it into a bundle and whatnot. So I sold her the three journals for $25. Um, I did pay for shipping and to ship those three was $4.57 using media mail. And so I made a profit on those journals of $20.43. Um, I told she went all about it and she was like, I'm not going to take your money. Like you're the one that, you know, made the sale and listed them and all that stuff. But we did get her and her family a huge dinner yesterday, actually. And my husband and I, we went back to work on Monday. My daughter didn't start until Thursday. So Chi Wen's husband actually watched my daughter with his sons while you know we were all at institute day and so we got them lunch every day we got them a big dinner last night we got them a few other things and so she said we're even but i'm just so thankful for her she's amazing but that technically was her sale but i kind of paid her back in other ways so on thursday which was july 29th i had one sale and it was over on facebook marketplace it was this jimboree floral spaghetti strap dress in a size 12. this sold for 16 dollars, and my profit was 14 dollars and 93 cents a lot of like girls dresses like summer dresses have been selling really well for me and then on friday which was july 30th i sold a bunch of stuff on posh mark because of closet clear out so the first thing to sell was this frank lyman black mock neck ruched dress in a size eight this sold for forty dollars and that was because of an offer that someone just sent to me and i was so ecstatic because i've had that listed for about a year i did get it at that local consignment store where i shopped in bulk so my cost of goods was extremely low it was 80 cents and i think this finally sold now because it is much more of like a cocktail dress or like a formal dress and there was no reason for people to buy that kind of stuff during covid not that covid is gone because it definitely is not but people are out and about much more than they used to be so my profit on that dress was 31 dollars and 20 cents the next thing to sell was another golf thing and this was from the same friend at church who you know gave me all that golf stuff the brand is tail and it was like tail white label but it was this half sip sleeveless golf top in a size extra small i used closet clear out i had this listed at 25 i messaged the buyer asking if you know i dropped the price to 20 dollars you know because poshmark would lower their shipping costs as well i asked if they'd be interested in that and they said yes so i made 16 dollars. and if you want to learn more about how i use closet clear out i know a lot of people hate it because they're like i can never make sales but i actually do make a good number of sales using closet clear out and i will link that video right here because it outlines just my steps and what i do and how i utilize closet clear out the next thing to sell was another closet clear out sale and it was this athleta cassidy gray long sleeve dress in a size medium this sold for 32 dollars. i believe i had it listed at 40 but i asked if she'd you know work with me and do 32. i had about five dollars into that and so my profit was twenty dollars and sixty cents athleta dresses are another type of item that i like to pick up with the full knowledge that it's going to take me a while to move it that's just how it is they usually sell for a decent amount like you know usually over 30 dollars, but it just takes some time i'm not trying to dissuade you from picking them up but um if you don't like to hold on to things perhaps you might want to stay away if you're okay with you know storing things in your house for a little bit Athleta dresses, you know, they're not bad. The next thing to sell was this pair of New With Tags Loft Petite Marissa trousers in a size 12 petite. This one sold for $28. I had $1.80 into those, and so I made a profit of $20.60. I got them at a local consignment store not too long ago, and they were running a really, really great sale, like 90% off of, you know, a certain color tag. You know, lately for the past like year and a half, maybe even two years, I haven't really been picking up a lot of career pants just because i feel like there are so many on the market and it's hard to tell one pair apart from another you know especially for brands like loft and whatnot but i do remember picking these up because of the fact that they were a bigger size and they were new with tags and career pieces have been moving really well for me so the fact that i was able to make 
you know, more than a $20 profit on those paints. I thought that that was really great. The last thing to sell this day on Poshmark was this lot of two Hannah Anderson turtlenecks in a size six. They actually were like slightly different in size. Like one was like a 120 and one was a 130, but um, they were close enough. And they were made of like organic cotton. They sold for $12. I had a dollar and 60 cents into them. I did sell that lot using closet clear out. And so my profit on those was $7 and 45 cents. I got them at that local consignment store when I did the big bulk buy. I basically would just pick up anything if it said Hannah Anderson, but these are so basic. Like I did not need to pick these up. So just a tip for you. Don't pick up Hannah Anderson if it's super basic. And then on Saturday, which was the 31st, I sold this pair of American Eagle white original bootcut jeans in a size six. These sold for my full asking price of $25. I believe I had just relisted them using seller insight and literally like the day after I relisted them, they sold. So relist your sale listings. And y'all know that I like to relist using an app called seller insight because it's so fast and easy. I had less than a dollar into those my profit was $19 and 20 cents and then I also sold this White House black market geometric print dress in a size medium for $16 I picked it up at the same consignment store for under a dollar last summer and I made a $12 profit on that dress I believe that dress also went to thread up didn't sell it thread up came back to me and I finally sold it for 12 I did have one eBay sale this day and it was this point sewer which is a J crew kind of like sub brand but this was a yellow three-fourth sleeve lacy blouse in a size six. This sold for my full asking price on eBay of $34.99 with free shipping. I had $4 into it from a local consignment store. And so I made a profit of $22.35. You know, that's my sweet spot. If I'm making more than $20 on an item, I'm super happy. And you'll probably notice that a lot of my items have come from consignment stores. That's honestly where I like to shop now over thrift stores, just because the selection is usually better. And especially when they're running those really, you know, heavily discounted sales, I can get items for less than I would at Goodwill. So you better believe I visit my consignment stores on a pretty regular basis. And then on Sunday, which was the first day of August, I had a decent sales day actually. On eBay, I sold this pair of American Eagle distressed super low rise jeggings in a size two. These had some flaws on them, like some pink highlighter markings all over them. Um, I don't know. There were just a few things wrong with them, but they still sold for $15 um, with, you know, being promoted at 1%. The buyer paid for shipping. I had less than a dollar into these because they came from that local consignment store. So I made a profit of $9.50. American Eagle usually goes for a lot more, you know, their denim, but because of the fact that there were so many flaws on these, I just went ahead and took that $15 offer. The next thing to sell on eBay was this new with tags, Jimboree pastel striped halter neck dress in a size 12. So that's the the second Jimboree dress of the week that I'm talking about. And I got that from the same friend that gave me all the golf stuff that gave me the other Jimboree dress. It was just something that is way too big for my daughter. And I didn't want to like hang on to it for, you know, another four years on the off chance that she would wear this. So I just went ahead and listed it. It sold for $19 and 90 cents. That was the offer that I sent out to watchers. Um, it was promoted at 1%. They paid for shipping. I made a profit of 16 dollars and 88 cents so that's what i mean if i'm gonna go out and buy something myself from a consignment store or from a thrift store i'm gonna buy it only if I feel pretty confident that I'm going to be able to make a $20 profit or more on that item. However, if someone is just giving me something, I don't care if the profit is like $4 or $8. It's free profit. It's already in my house. I'm going to go ahead and list it, you know? Same goes for like things that I find around my own home. So that's why I have kind of this mix of like, items that I make $20 on, $50 on, and then like $4 on. And that's why I'm okay with it. Those smaller price items are things that I'm getting for free. And that's why you need to tell people what it is that you do, that you're a reseller, because people are pretty generous. And I know even for myself, I'm in a constant state of just kind of decluttering and getting rid of stuff in my house that I no longer need. And so if your friends are like that as well, you know, they're in this constant state of letting go of items and you know what better person to give those items to than you that is a tip that a couple people shared in my ebay tips video i will link that video right here um and these are you know like big time sellers and a lot of their inventory just comes from their neighbors and friends and different people so tell people what you do i have made thousands of dollars off of others generosity so 
if you haven't tried it, I definitely recommend it. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari, and it was this Brytax B Agile Baby Stroller Snack Tray. This was ours. We used it on our stroller, but very seldom. Like, I don't know why we never just snapped it onto our stroller very much when our kids were little, but it sold for $13 on Mercari, and I made a profit of $11.02 on something that was just taking up space in our house. The next thing to sell was this pair of American Eagle Red Classic Cargo Shorts. These sold for $18, and I did have less than a dollar into them because I got them from that local consignment store from that bulk sale. And so my profit on those was $14.58. Last but not least, I had a Facebook marketplace sale on this new with tags Puanani. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's this Hawaiian dress made in Hawaii in a size small. This sold for $30. I also had less than a dollar into that dress because it came from that same consignment bulk sale. And so I made a profit on that dress of $27 and 42 cents you know these uh hawaiian style dresses made in hawaii same thing like they can do okay you can make money on them usually you have to sit on them for quite some time though so just take that into account if you are you know looking at a Hawaiian dress to pick up. So let me give you my numbers. I'll also talk about how I did in the month of July. So in Poshmark, in the last week of July, I sold 11 items, and that was for a gross sales amount of $295. Once you factor in any shipping discounts that I may have offered and Poshmark's 20% fees, that total drops to $232.44. My cost of goods on those 11 items was $23.80, and so I made a net profit on Poshmark of $200 eight dollars and 64 cents on ebay i sold eight items for a gross sales amount of 193 dollars and 77 cents my total dropped to 150 dollars and 55 cents once you factor in shipping and ebay's fees and promoted fees um, my cost of goods on those eight items was 22 dollars and 60 cents and so my net profit on ebay was 127 dollars and 95 cents on Mercari, I had three sales for a gross sales amount of $56. Once you factor in Mercari's 10% fees, plus they have these other like little fees, um, that total drops to $47.87. My cost of goods on those three items was only $5.66. And so I made a profit of $42.21 on Mercari. On Facebook Marketplace, I also had three sales and that was for $86 in gross sales. That was more than Mercari. Facebook Marketplace fees are so low it's like 5%. So after fees, um, I made a profit of $80.70. My cost of goods for those Facebook Marketplace items was only 80 cents. And so I made a net profit on Facebook Marketplace of $80.70. I did have two direct sales resulting in $70 in gross sales. Once you factor in shipping, which I covered and, um, you know, like maybe PayPal fees, stuff like that. My total drops to $61.34. I had $8.20 as my cost of goods. And so my net profit on those two direct sales was $53.14. So in total, in the last week of July, I sold 27 items for a gross sales amount of $700.77. Once you factor in all of the fees and shipping and all that kind of stuff, my total drops to $572.90. My cost of goods for those 27 items was $61.06. And so my profit, what actually made its way into my bank account was $512.64. It's not awful, but it's not where I want to be. I'm trying to hit at least $650 a week. And obviously I was shy of that by more than $100. So it's not surprising then that in the month of July, I only made $2,039.39, which did not meet my $2,500 goal. I missed it by almost $500, which is a pretty significant amount. But oddly enough, I feel like for whatever reason, being back in school is going to help me just get back into my rhythm of listing consistently, mainly because I list during my lunch hour and it's like built into my day versus over the summer when I was home, you know, like my kids are home too. And so I never really had a consistent schedule and there were a lot of days that would get away from me and I'd realize, oh my God, like I didn't list anything today. So I have actually been 
very consistently listing like at least 10 items a day, five of which are hard goods because I have so many like books and random hard goods at home. So I've been listing at least 10 things a day and I've been doing really well in this past couple days. So that is everything that sold for me in the last week of July. Thank you guys so much for watching. The next What Sold video is actually going to be a compilation of the first week of August and the second week of August. And they are really crappy weeks. Like they are awful weeks of reselling and it's because you know the first week I was on vacation I was doing a good job of like listing and doing all these different things and the second week of vacation I completely dropped off so if you want to see what reselling looks like when you don't do the things that you're supposed to do as a reseller stay tuned for those videos hit that subscribe button so that you can see when those videos uh, come up and that's it for this video I'll see you guys in the next one bye